Hey guys, so I'll be showing you how to share one mouse and keyboard between multiple devices. So if this works for you, please leave a like and subscribe, and let's start the video. So before we set anything up, you're going to have to decide on which computer is going to be the server. The server is the computer that has the keyboard or mouse that you're going to use to control all the devices. You can have as many devices as you want, but there has to be one server and the rest will be clients. The clients will connect to the server with this local IP address, and then after that you'll be able to control all of your clients just from your server. To install this application on Linux, all you need to do is open up a new terminal window, and then use your package manager. For me, I'm using an Ubuntu based distribution, so it's just sudo apt install, and then barrier, that's the name of the application. Then after you click enter, it'll automatically install. Most of the popular Linux distributions are supported. If you want to check it out, just check the GitHub, I'll put a link in the description, and you can see if your distribution is supported. Now I've completely installed it, and when I open it up, it'll look something like this. If you're on Windows or Mac, you're going to have to download the installer from their GitHub page. I'll leave a link in the description. If you don't want to click on the link in the description, you can just search Barrier KVM in Google, and then click on the first link. And then you'll see releases for Windows and Mac OS. Then once you click on that, you'll be able to download the DMG or EXE depending on what operating system you have. For Mac is DMG and for Windows it's EXE. So I'm on Mac OS right now, so I'm going to download the DMG file. And then once you open it up, the app is right there. You don't, have, you don't really have to install anything. All you need to do is drag that to your applications folder. So just open up a new finder window and then drag that to your applications. I've already done it, but if you haven't, just do that. Once you open it up for the first time, it might not let you for security reasons. All you have to do to bypass that is right click, and then click open, and then it will allow you to open the app. This is only on Mac OS because they have a little more strict precautions, but you can just bypass that easily. And then after it's installed, it looks something like this. Now we're going to be setting up the server. So go into your computer, and then click on the button that says Configure Server. If you want to add a new computer, drag the computer icon to where it is in real life, and then double click it. Then for screen name, put in the screen name of the client. If you don't know what that is, go to your client, open up Barrier, and then look at the screen name. It'll be somewhere over here. For me, it's my MacBook, and the screen name is Mother's MacBook.local, so I'm just going to put that in. If you don't put it in correctly, it just won't work. So for modifier keys, only change this if your server is Windows or Linux and your client is a Mac. Since they have different keys on their keyboard, it's just a little different. If your server is a MacBook and your client is Windows or Linux, then it might look a little different, I don't know. But in this case, you just have to change it to this, and then it will work perfectly fine. You can use Control to, you know, Control C and Control V like normally, and you won't have to click different keys to do the same thing on different computers. Now you've successfully added a computer to your server. After that, click OK. And then if you want to start up your barrier server, all you need to do is click on start at the bottom right. Now we're not completely done yet, we have to connect to it on our client. To set up the client, you really don't have to do anything. All you need to do is find the local IP address of your server, and then put that in. And then after you click start at the bottom right, you'll be connected to the server. If you don't know how to find the local IP address of your server computer, just go over to that computer, and then if you're on a Mac or a Linux machine, you're going to have to open the terminal and then put one of these commands in. If you're on Windows, you're going to have to open the command prompt and then put an ipconfig, and then look for the ipv4 address. If the IP address doesn't start with 10 or 192.168, then that is not a local ipv4 address. You can't just go into Google and search up what is my IP address, and I'll give you a brief explanation to why that is. There are two types of IPv4 addresses, local and public. Local IP addresses are used in your home network, so your device can communicate with other devices also on your home network. These addresses are given to each device in the Wi-Fi network, and that is also how your router identifies your device. If you wanted to communicate with that computer outside of your network, like a website, your device would ask the router to fetch the data, and your router will use a public IP address to communicate with devices on the World Wide Web or whatever you want to call it. So if you searched what is my IP address on Google, it won't tell you your local IP address that you'd use in your network. It would show you your router's public IP address. And most likely your entire home network will have one public IP address provided by your ISP. 
If you want to see for yourself, you can search up what is my IPv4 address on multiple devices on the same network, and it will show you the same address. If you want Barry to start automatically whenever you boot up your computer, there's a really simple way to do this. All you need to do is open up the barrier settings. On Mac, it'll be at the top left over here, and then you click on change settings. But if you're on Windows or Linux, it'll also be like on the window, like somewhere around here. Then just click barrier and then change settings. Then this window will pop up. You get a list of settings. And the one you need to check is start barrier on startup. It's very simple. And also make sure hide on startup is checked so it doesn't open up the barrier window and it'll just stay hidden. So whenever you boot up your computer, barrier will start up and you won't have to enable it manually. I wouldn't really recommend changing any of the settings if you don't know what you're doing. And you really don't need to change the port number unless it's being used on your network, but it probably isn't, so just keep everything the same. If you're on the Linux version of the app, there isn't a way to make barriers start up automatically in the app, but there is an easy way to get around this. But first, make sure you go to the barrier settings and make sure your hide on startup is on. Then after you make sure that's on, just check it and then click OK at the bottom right. Then if you're on an Ubuntu based distribution, there should be an application called Startup Applications. This lets you run commands whenever your computer boots up. So what we're going to do is make a command that starts a barrier every time you boot up your computer. So I'm just going to open this application. And as you can see, I already have a rule that makes barriers start up whenever I boot up my computer, but if you don't, you're going to have to click add at the top right. For me, I'm just going to edit my already made rule, and you'll see what I have here. The name and comment don't matter, but the command has to say the same. This command, whenever you put it into the terminal, it will open up barrier. So if you put it here and it runs every time you boot up your computer, it will also just start a barrier. Now the name and comment, I just left it as barrier and then barrier kvm just to identify it and then click save at the bottom right and then you can close it. Now whenever you boot up your computer, it will also start up. If you want to set up hotkeys on your server, it's very simple. All you need to do is click on configure server at the left hand side of the screen and then click hotkeys at the top. I have three hotkeys set up. The first one is F8 and whenever I click that, it'll lock my cursor to the screen so I can't move to any other monitor. Some full screen applications will already lock your cursor to the monitor, but some don't. When my cursor is locked to one screen, I use Alt Z and Alt X to switch to any of the screens instantly, so I don't have to keep unlocking and relocking my cursor. Click new to make a new hotkey and then select any keystroke. I'm just going to do something random like Control Alt Shift and U. And then make sure you click on that hotkey and then click new for an action. And then all of this is pretty self-explanatory. You could just choose what happens when you select that hotkey. You can make actions happen on certain screens and stuff like that. After you've configured your action, just click OK at the bottom right. Now here's what it looks like in real life. If you have different sized monitors, it won't really look that seamless, but I don't really mind that. This application also syncs both computers' clipboards, and if you have an iPhone and a Mac, this basically means that all three of your device's clipboards will also be synced. Anyways, that is how you share a mouse and keyboard between multiple computers. If this video worked for you, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.